Eric. I'm working on, uh, what is it, uh, an interactive storytelling framework. Pretty nebulous description, uh, but today more specifically, I'm going to work on writing some unit tests for a PubSub framework. And uh, before I do that, let me give a quick demo of what I got done yesterday. And uh, it leads into what I'm doing today. So it makes some sense to, to demo that. All right. And boom, ba -dum. So let us go and check that out. So yesterday I made this bit of code that draws a mouth here. Um, it takes from a sprite sheet, which looks like this and depending on which visine you have selected a visine is a visual expression of uh, a sound that comes out of your mouth depending on which visine you have selected it should show one of these mouth frames here okay so right now i think i have it showing uh wq this one let me see if that's right yep but there's other ones. Um, so I'm using uh, a Visim system created by one of the first Disney animators named Preston Blair, or one of the founding Disney animators. So it's got these different, different mouth shapes that cover the common sounds that you make out of your mouth. So AI, I, or long A, long I, mouth mostly open, consonants, which covers a whole bunch of sounds, E or E. Actually, I'm not sure if it's short E or, I think it's E, 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 that's the one with your mouth spread out wide, long E, F, E, you tuck in the bottom of your mouth a little bit to make that noise, like, like that. L, showing your tongue a bit, um, your tongue's kind of curled as you speak. Oh, you know, and, and so on, and so on, okay? So if I go into my code that is producing this web page, and I, I want to change the currently showing Byzeme, I can do it by changing the code. Um, let's go to the right project. That's my pub sub. Okay, so go here. So right now I've got it hard coded. Let's see, the current visine is set here. Let's set it to L. L is a really obvious one when it's shown because it's got the tongue sticking out. Yeah, there. So you get the L sound there back on the page. So I want some better way to update the mouth in response to um, the Visium changing. But I also thought about my general mission here, which is to create a full animated face with a lot of things happening. And I want code that controls mouth and eyes 
and the overall face to respond to events. And I don't want the events that are fired to be coupled to the things that will uh, express those events. So an event could be something like a uh, mood change. Like, say the mood changed from neutral to happy. Well, that might make the eyes look a little bit different. That might make the mouth look a bit different. That might make the overall face um, be warped a little bit uh, to show the, the happy expression. Uh, and maybe those components, maybe they render different ways so that like if I have one type of face that has a, has a certain set of assets to it, like a, say there's a 3D face and there's a 2D face, and I both want them to be able to do something when the mood changes, but not have that communication be kind of assumed then what I, I can use that works well for this is uh, a pub-sub pattern. So the way pub-sub works is you have a sender or a publisher um, that says, I'm going to send out a message. I don't know who it's going to, but it's going to be on a certain topic. Whoever subscribed to this topic, they can have this message. And that means that the code that is... Uh, the code that is sending the messages for the publisher, it doesn't need to know who's going to be subscribed. Now, the components that draw different parts of the face, the mouth, the eyes, the overall face, maybe other stuff later as I add it on, they can subscribe to certain events or certain messages on a topic. Or I should say they can subscribe to all messages on a certain topic. Um, and then it just gets delivered to them. So I wrote a class yesterday uh, that is probably pretty close to code complete for a pub sub, but I don't want to test it by just hooking it up to uh, the overall system and seeing if it works. I don't want to manually test it. I want to unit test it. If you're not familiar with unit testing, that means you write some tests, you write some code that executes, and uh, it it will the, the the test code will execute your code uh, that you created that you want to have tested, and it'll see what happens in response to being executed, and check that what happens matches what's expected. Um, so I'm going to write a bunch of unit tests today to make sure my little pub sub object is working as expected. And um, that's what will occupy a few hours of my time. I've got more time left over, then I'll see if I want to take another task on in this session or not. Uh, I always like to end these streams with whatever I set out to do done. That's kind of a, a major thing for my psychology to make it work well. So here we go. Um, Let's go to the object or the class that I created. You can see it's got two methods here, publish and subscribe, and this whole class here. Um, but weirdly, it, maybe it might seem weird to some, the class is private, and it uh, there's, there's two exported functions for publishing events and subscribing to events. And these are the only exports of the module. Why would I do that? Because I want this to be a singleton, a singleton object that is used to across um, multiple modules. Basically any module that loads into the same document object model, the DOM, is gonna be able to use the same instance. So that's what a singleton is. It's a shared instance between uh, multiple users of it. Um, so what I did here is I have some code that will just run as needed to create the shared instance of the pub sub uh, uh, shared of the pub sub class and 
just tuck it into the the, the DOM by um, taking the window object and just adding it there. So it's in a known location accessible to any way. It's got access to the same DOM. Okay. And then these two functions, publish event and subscribe event, they will grab the shared instance and call the method on that shared instance. If I just export the class, then each module that imported that class and instance it would have its own separate instance. And because the whole point of the PubSub object is to share data among multiple callers, um, I want the singleton pattern to be here. All right, so that's basically it. It's not too much code here. Uh, interesting thing about unit tests, or counterintuitive to people who haven't worked with them much, is um, I'll actually write much more unit testing code than the code under test, which is this module here. So I would predict I'll probably write like three or 400 lines of code to test 60 lines of code here. I don't do that for every single piece of code, just places where I think it's particularly valuable. So I'm gonna use Jest, which is um, a testing library that um, you can import yourself into any node-based project, but it comes automatically with the Create React app-based project. So Create React app, when you uh, create a new project, it will it will configure it to to import Jest as well, so that Jest is available. So let's see. This is going to be the pub sub test. I use the the in the front to indicate to me that there's a, a singleton involved with the code in the module. Okay, so first I'm going to import. Um, let's see. Subscribe event and publish event from the module under test. Then we just say describe. Now we start out with the name of the module. Okay. Then just to make sure that I've got all of the functions that are exported covered, I'll add in two suites here, one for each method that I want to test. In practice, a lot of the test cases will end up calling both methods. But if I start out by just writing out these things, and it's just a reminder, I want to cover cover both methods. Okay. Um, let me put one example test in each one because I haven't from the NPM, I haven't, I haven't run the test suite yet. So I created a new project yesterday and then I haven't run any tests yet. So I'm just gonna put in some jump tests just to make sure that uh, the test suites are running. Uh, so I'm gonna say that, jump two. C sharp memory there. I'm not in C sharp, I'm in TypeScript. Okay, uh, so you can say expect x to equal two. This is just a garbage test to make sure that it's working as expected. Um, so come back to the command line and uh, okay. Uh, web face. Okay. So here, if I say npm run test, cool. So I picked up my two tests. That's all good. Uh, the other thing I like to do is run test coverage. Is that okay? That's not set up yet, so I need to bring that over another project into my package JSON. Let me see which which of my other projects is similar. 
enough that I can expect to be able to copy over. This conversation's TypeScript based. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go look at the package JSON. Does it have coverage? NPM script. Nope, it doesn't. Um, Should just double check on this. Create React app test coverage. Just tell me what the normal way people run. Oh, I see. That, that seems pretty simple. Let's do that. Try that, but I'm used to this being under test cover. Uh, why did you? I'm used to it being like this, so I'll do that. Let's see if that works. NPM run. Uh, there we go. Ah. Oops, I put this in the wrong place. Let's go back to web face. Let's go to package JSON. I really like to have uh, coverage reports because I can use that to see which nooks and crannies of my code haven't been tested. Okay. So a bunch of these I just don't care about. Okay. Um, the pub. So here we go. So it's saying the whole thing pretty much is not tested. That's that's fine. So let's start adding some tests. Let's flip this off to the right. By the way, if you don't have an IDE that lets you do uh, multiple source files open side by side, ah. Uh, you're in for a great improvement to your coding life after you get one that does does do that. Okay. So usually I like to put in some tests that just uh, do the smallest amount possible. Uh, let's see. Can subscribe to a topic. event dogs then I have to pass a uh, callback just pass let's call back signature oh event any Um, it does return, it returns, uh, okay, it returns a subscription handle. Let's say returns a subscription handle or just a handle when I'm subscribing to a topic. Let handle equals. Okay, expect the handle. It's a pretty much an o opaque structure, so I'm not going to worry about um, inspecting it very closely. I'll just say it if it's not null. 
or actually let's see uh, let's just say to be defined that's good enough okay let's see what does that do all right one pass two passed cool now I know that handle um, has something to clean it up and remove it. But I want to test changes to behavior. Um, that are part of the contract of, of what this class is meant to support. So I was tempted for a moment to write like a little blurb here about, uh, or a little test here about uh, removing the event and writing some kind of accessor to see like, okay, uh, how, how many subscriptions are there? But that's not testing the contract. That would cause me to create more methods that aren't really needed. Um, to actually use the object. So I'm going to move on to publish event for now. Uh, and I'll come back to that particular case for removing the subscription when I'm testing both of the things together. And that'll be easier for me to test the actual contract as opposed to some little implementation detail. Okay, so publishing the event, publishing the event. For that, uh, let's just say, let's do a very simple test, uh, very simple test. You can publish when there are no subscriptions. So we'll say, publish event. That should be fine too. Uh, okay. Cool. So I've already found one bug. This is good. The bug that it's complaining about is that there's there's there are no subscriptions. And since there are no subscriptions. Uh, this line here fails. So I'll just say, if not subscriptions, return. There, I fixed the test. Okay. You can also see my coverage changing here, because now I, the each test that's running is is exercising some of the lines of code, and if I write enough tests they will exercise all the lines of code inside of this, the pub sub .ts, right? Okay, so now let me, let me add in um, yeah, add in some more, okay. Uh, I'll just say Publish and subscribe. Okay. Subscriber. I, I feel better about it going up here actually. So I'll just put it up here. Because most most of the things are going to be talking about what the um, what the subscriber expects to, to get. So I'll put them up here. Um, All right. Let's say, um, 
then I want something to to, to I want the the event to be set to whatever uh, was received. So we'll say last event equals the event. Okay, so here I would expect last event to uh, to equal to equal. Okay, let's try that. Fail. Okay. It returned null. So I believe publish event is synchronous. I don't think I have anything asynchronous here. I don't think, there's not going to be a timing issue. It's probably an error in my logic. Let's see. So subscriptions coming up is undefined. Oh, I, I can see right here. This is a different topic. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, that's good. That also makes me think, let's cover another case that I just actually tested, which was subscriber does not receive event before unsubscribed top. So if I say we're going to subscribe to cats, then I expect not to get anything. Okay. Cool. And now, actually, I've got only one line of code that hasn't been covered. Uh, although I can think of more cases that I, I do want to check. It's this remove functionality. So let's say subscriber does not receive event to unsubscribed topic. Okay, so here I'm gonna say, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, subscribe to dogs, but then we'll unsubscribe. So we'll say handle remove, and we'll expect this to be null. Noticing that I don't need handle on all of these. Okay. And let's try that again. Okay, 20, 25, it says I'm not doing. That one, it's just saying that, okay, if, if the entry is undefined, we're not gonna call the call back. And I thought that deleting here would cause this line to not be called. But I might 
misunderstand how arrays work inside of JavaScript. So we're not getting an idea what's going on in this case. So let's do IT only. By the way, I can tell right away I'm not going to spend the whole session on this. I'm going to have to mean, I'm going to have to move on to some other tasks in the same session, which is pretty cool. I don't mind that at all. Okay. Subscriptions, one empty item. That seems fine. But I, I don't understand why I don't have both of these being executed. Let me take a look at the case where it's got two. Oh, no, that's not a good case. Let's do this one. There might already be a handler inside of for each that skips over empties. That could very well be it. Um, let's do this. Console log on receive event. That would make a lot of sense to me, actually. For each would have a built-in detection of when an element was removed. So let's look at just the case where I remove the subscription. Okay. Okay. Got it. I don't need this line of code here. So the code coverage check. Ah, uh, now what? Yeah. Ah, come on. Yeah, it's complaining about an eventuality that seems to be impossible. Uh, let me just write this the old fashioned way. Let uh, uh, subscription i equals zero. Subscription i less than subscriptions length. I don't know how many times I've just reverted back to four and gotten what I wanted. Um, so we'll say if subscriptions, subscription I uh, let's even do it this way. Const callback. If callback, callback, event. There we go. So I suspect that's the way to do it. Is everything passed? And let's get rid of this. I'm guessing that's 100%. It is. Okay. 100% coverage now. Um, okay. So let's do one to many subscriptions.
these console logs that I do not need anymore. There we go. Cases that I want to cover here. I think that's pretty good. Okay. So Working on unit tests. Let's see. What was Eric doing today? Working on facial mouth animation component to a pub. Sub, sub, object. And that updates the little OBS widget. Okay, back to web face. Okay, so now if I go to mouth, I can see class here so I want to, I want to be able to take the current visine and set it based on subscribing to um, mouth events so let me see uh, I can also export some, some topics. This feels like it, it maybe ought to be in its own directory. So let's make a new one. Events. Move this guy here. Move this guy here too. Add a new file for topics. Export balanced mouth. Let's see. Biasing equals biasing. Mm. Maybe this is better if I do. Const topics Visium Visium Export Default Topics Link we go. mouth let's import topics from events topics what 
think at some point I'll need to put in the absolute path stuff. Okay, import. Um, subscribe event. Yeah, that one. Okay. And let's do uh, subscribe event. Topics. Fuzzing. Gonna, I'm also going to want to use use state. Port use state. Um, react. So right now um, I've just got. Oh, oh yeah. I I got confused and, th and thought I was in a uh, React component. I am not. That's fine. Okay. So on by Zim. Don't need use state, don't need anything React component for this. Okay, uh, I'll take Okay, but you will need Z. It's been a while. What's going on, Z? Okay, let's see. On by Zim. Gonna pass in the event. And why don't we do Uh, I don't know. Have I been busy? I don't think I've been busy. Uh, what, what, what are you busy with? code I won't ask too many questions about your new job yeah there might be like stuff you don't want to talk about but yeah that's that's cool oh four SD uh, nice nice man so you know the deal with Amazon uh, they might uh chew you up and spit you out after a while. But if I remember right, uh, I don't know. It might have been a busy year or so for you. Is this like your first dev job? I thought you were like kind of like a student. And uh, I wasn't sure if you had, had uh, gone into the workforce yet, or at least IT workforce. Nice, nice. Let them burn you out. Let them burn you out. It won't be the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. And then I've heard some good things about Amazon too. It kind of depends which team or department you work with. And But uh, yeah, congrats. This is such a simple function. I just feel like I finished that game. I finished it. Uh, it's been out for a little while since the beginning of the year. 
Let's see. So the God Killer, Chapter One, on Steam. So this guy has been out since the beginning of the year. Um, I didn't get much attention on it, if I'm perfectly honest. It's okay. There's just a lot of games released. Uh, but yeah, this thing, I'm proud of it though. It, it all works. It's a real game. Play it from beginning to end. It's got my music in it. It's got my puzzles in it. It's got my coding in it. Yeah. Let's say Yeah, play the demo. Demo's free. Let's see. So this current buys me equals uh, event as buys me. Okay. So then that little one liner lets me get rid of this function. And that's that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay. Okay, so then if I've got that, then let me make another thing to put on the web page. I believe this web page will still be yeah, the same as it was. Cool. So the next thing I'll do is I'll make a little um, set of buttons that let me choose which mouth position I want. And they will publish an event and my mouth component will pick up that event and use it to change to different mouth frames. So let's see. Mouth. Uh, Interesting. Interesting. Tell me more. I'm serious. Or or drop a link. Um, that might overlap a little with what I'm doing. It depends on what you want to do with the game. Okay. Cool. Have you thought about uh, does the speech recognition um, overlap with your game at all? I I also realize you may have like completely figured out what you want to do in your game. I'm not trying to persuade you to do anything different than what you're already doing. Not at all. I'm just kind of checking to see if we've got overlap between the two of us. Um, so, what's your platform? Are you doing like Unity or Web or Unreal? Okay, let me see. Bosk demo. Godot, yeah. Okay. So Godot, I believe that's C++. Uh, okay, so if I go into this FOSS browser demo and I load the English language model and I start talking and I start talking and it picks up, you know, all, all of my words pretty well. Um, it's got a, a decent vocabulary. It's got a first pass where it uh, makes a quick guess, very low latency, at what you're going to say. And then it comes back in a second pass to check if, uh, you know, with Markov models and, you know, predictions, if certain words are more likely to be what should be in the transcript or not. 
And it's pretty good. And it's all offline, too. That's a, that's the big thing about it. It's all offline. No round trips to some server someplace to, to handle all the processing. Um, so I'm really huge on it. It's pretty easy to use. Um, and like if you're thinking about games for blind people that are audio based and what the interface could be, why not speech recognition? So yeah, if, if you want to look into that particular library, which should have uh, an import path into Unreal Engine, is called Fosk. Okay, so I think let's create one new directory for UI. But yeah, if you get anything you want to share about your game at some point, you know, come on the stream or send me a link or something. So I do think that's a cool idea of making games for blind people. Not even just like, we want to be good people, but just it's like a, a cool constraint for game development. Just to be purely audio, it's very neat. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Visium selector. And this one will make a React component because I intend to display it on the web page. Let's say function Visium selector props that props bam bam bam. I don't know if I have any props I need to pass, but I just like to create this little like, bit of boilerplate here. Uh, what, what's your complaint? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds interesting. I'm also somebody who does like a lot of things in a pure audio way just because it fits what I'm trying to do. Or maybe I'm busy with something else. So, you know, like podcasts and audio books and things like that. Um, yeah. Those kinds of kinds of games could be good to play on road trips as well. Like if you have somebody that's bored on a long road trip and they gotta drive. Yeah. Okay. So Visium selector will say return. Uh, it's just gonna be a div. Yep. Okay, but uh, what's it? One click. Equals. Click, uh, and then let's do an import of Visiums up here. Import Visium. Sort of thing. Is it? Can't remember. Is it 
value. No. Okay, so we'll do a uh, kind of like that. Button. Import uh, publish event. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see if I zoom. If I zoom. Ah. If I zoom. Publish event. It's going to be topics. By zoom. Okay. I'll start with that. Zoom selector. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Okay, there's my little button. So it's starting on L if I go here. Yes, it goes to AI. Okay, so that worked. Pretty nice. Let's add in the rest of the buttons. Okay. So it's going to be how many more? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this next one will be E. E, then F, E, then L. O, M, B, P, U, W, Q. Next. the first try how about that uh, let's get a little bit of cosmetics on this guy Two. 
Everything? Everything is fine? In Argentina? You got all that terrible inflation? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I hope you're doing okay. I know I know things are, are, are rough there. But actually, were, were you... Are you still in Argentina, like Buenos Aires? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I know like some people down there and like, you know, one lady I work with, you know, she's having a rough time. She says like, just like going out on the street sometimes, she has to be extra careful and like listen for crime and watch for crime and stuff. I mean, there's American cities that are like that too. So it's not like a big Argentina thing. But uh, yeah, I understand it's a little rough over there right now. And I uh, hope you're doing fine. Let's see. Bar. Bar button. Yeah. Oh, my wife just texted me. What did she say? Oh, I got a uh, grocery delivery coming in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to finish up here in about five minutes. Uh, yeah, let's see. That's all we got. Bar. Uh, let's do it. Margin point to REM. And let's say let's give it even even width. No way. That's really cool. Last time I talked to you, I think you had uh, you you had either graduated from that course or that program or were close to it. And you had like some work you were doing with uh, like a a real estate like a 3D model of a real estate you got a job as a game dev that's awesome those jobs are hard to get a lot of times congratulations So I'm working on this this framework for uh, interactive storytelling. Uh, it's going to have like animated faces and speech recognition. Um, and I want it to be on the web. I don't want to use Unity or an engine, so that it's easier for people to go to it and just try it out, whatever the the game is. And also, um, I don't have to deal with like Steam and um, you know whatever the portal is that the the game gets released on. So, class name equals styles bar. No, I'm still in the same place. I'm in Seattle, Washington. Uh, okay, so that's too small, but let me see what the right sizes are. Let's see, one area. Two area. That's pretty good. That's what I want.
All right, I'm gonna wrap up here pretty quick. Ah. All right, so that's a pretty good session for me. I got this all this stuff working. Uses this pub sub framework. All right, so I've got a grocery delivery coming. I gotta go bring that inside. Just gonna stop the stream here. Uh, Mateo, really cool to see you. Uh, glad you got that dev job. Z, nice talking to you, whoever else is on. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Yeah. All right, buddy, catch you later. Stopping the stream, stopping the stream, stop, 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 stop.